Okay, guys, we're doing the rear brakes on our 2010 Ford Ranger 4x4. And they're disc brake, hydraulic disc, with a emergency brake drum. And the tool list, don't have to have everything here, but probably the most essential is 10 millimeter wrench. We're using a 3 8 drive ratchet with a 10 mil socket. Um, this is actually a panel tool, but uh, use it to pop off the center cap. A couple various size pry bars for the caliper. I always use a C clamp to push back the piston. Uh, get the wheel off. Oops. We've got a three quarter inch socket on the half inch drive air impact. No brake job is complete without a couple nice size hammers. Got a file here to clean off rust off of various parts and components. This truck sits around a lot. Die grinder helps do that too. With a little sander disc. And this is like a Scotch Brite pad. Kind of cleans up some of the rusty parts. Blow gun is always essential. Some uh, synthetic brake caliper grease. Uh, this is also, I think, a silicone-based one. Um, this is just some anti-seize. I put a little bit of that on the hub. It can handle the heat. As you'll see, these probably are not going to cooperate. Oh, always need some brake parts cleaner. But uh, often we'll use some anti-seize on the on the the hub, so that the uh, the next time these rotors need to come off. Uh, they'll come off a little bit more easily. So with that, that's the tool list. We'll get to it Okay, first we use our panel tool and these rims aren't in the best shape This truck has 256,000 miles on it uh, So we go ahead and pry against the rim and Kind of work off the center cap and occasionally like that. It'll it'll put a small mark on there, but Again, if your wheels are pristine, you might want to put something there, a little piece of thin wood, like a wood shim or something. Even a paint stir stick, if you have something like that, could be good to protect your rim. But again, we're not super worried about these in particular. The air impact. Now we got a good look at the, the task at hand here. As you can see, let's try to bring it a little bit closer. She hasn't been apart in a while. Little rusty. Yeah. Okay, well, we're gonna move a couple things and get your front row seat here. All right, got a good front row seat here. So here's where you will need your 10 mil wrench. And right here, you'll see the stud between the stud and what I, I think this is part of the tire pressure monitoring system, the TPMS. This guy right here. Um, but in any case, there's maybe grab the light and see. It kind of looks a little dark in there. I'll try to get a little bit of light on. Is that better? Oh yeah. Yeah, this guy right here, I think is part of the uh, tire pressure monitoring system. So I usually try to hold on tight and give it some love taps. They shouldn't be too tight. And uh, yeah, we're lucky this guy actually came off pretty, pretty easily. But they're inside there. Sometimes there'll be some corrosion at the end of, of these studs, but for the most part, they're in a sealed rubber slide so yeah he's in pretty good shape a little bit of corrosion at the end sometimes it makes him a little sticky got one more nut our bolt right down here that's the the two that are holding the caliper and with this particular setup some setups you have to remove 
the uh, the whole bracket, the, the caliper bracket. With this setup, you don't. Um, go ahead and go to the ratchet there. Sometimes these guys will thread out with your fingers, and sometimes you gotta coax them the entire way. And all this truck's in fantastic shape with the kind of mileage it has on it. It's really unbelievable. But you'll see here, there's a clip. And uh, I don't know if you can see how well. Um, you actually need to depress this clip alongside. And maybe we'll get a still shot. Okay. Got a picture for you guys there. We'll show that. On Took a little still shot and a little bit up close. But you gotta depress him and then you should be able to just sort of pry pry this guy away and sometimes they don't wanna always cooperate. Now that that pad in that inside pad is wanting to stick. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh look at these guys. Oh, they just been on here a long time. Oh, they're just falling apart. Terrible shape. I like to put a uh, pan. I forgot. I usually like to put a pan under here to kind of catch rust and pieces from. Small little cooking pan. Yeah, it's an old cooking pan we turned into a shop pan. <laughs> Works great for small little the ATVs and some of the little guys that you can't have a bigger drain pan under. I like to use it. This is an old metal coat hanger. I usually use hold the calipers up and out of the way securely so you don't let them hang from the brake line. Never want to do that. So with that, there's this clip here and this clip here. You should get new ones in your uh, brake pad kit. So that's kind of a close-up view. So brand new ones with no corrosion rust on them, so they're nice and smooth and will slide well. So you usually get those kind of tapped off and out of the way. They usually need, ooh, they usually need the influencer there bit of resistance so now you can see and we'll get a we'll get a close-up shot of uh, the rust that's on these brackets I mean who cares about that thing give me your close-up It's important that these get getting some still shots here, super close ups. But it's important that these get cleaned off well because when they corrode like that, they actually swell and expand. And if you beat those new metal brackets on there, it'll push them out, and then they won't fit properly. The clearances are not proper. They can actually pinch your pads and squeeze them to the point where your caliper and or pads will not release off the rotor and you can be driving and dragging a brake and a lot of people do it starts to kill your fuel economy and they don't even realize it they're just ruining the brakes ruining the rotors and costing a ton of fuel from a bad brake job and there's a lot of so-called professionals unfortunately that are incentivized to rush through and rush the job 
that don't do these small steps. They slap on new pads and a new rotor and send you on your way because they don't really care how your car is doing 15,000 miles down the road well, when their warranty is up at 12. Um, so you got to watch out for that stuff. And that's why it's so important to use guys that are really doing a good job. And, and usually they're charging a few bucks more uh, because they know they're doing a good job and it's worth it. So in any case, usually these rotors are... Uh, a little stuck and need a little bit of influence so you'll have to uh, pardon the noise here this guy's gonna need a lot of influence so I like to put on the uh, the lug protecting stud Worth noting, this truck sits most of its life anymore. It only gets a, about 3,000 miles a year, and we still change the oil, but these have really been sitting around. Most trucks are probably not going to go out. Guys, these clips and these brake pads and these new rotors we're using are from our local Napa store. And they're an ultra premium rotor, which is coated to uh, resist the corrosion that you see on these uh, in the non contact areas. Let's see this guy's. Pour up inside. All right. Now I always like to use the blowgun here and clean away some of this dust. And watch yourself, don't breathe it in. wheel speed sensor up front here and um, usually try to make sure to blow it off make sure it's clean and if you look for a more precise location if you look on the back side you can trace this wire right up to the back side of that sensor and that's the sensor and make sure it's good and clean before you put everything back together make sure it's getting a good reading it's part of your abs uh, that's how the computer knows if you've got wheels slipping traction control all that craziness so uh, next step is you like to throw the uh, clamp on here and Use this uh, big old C-clamp here to push the piston back in, and then what this does is it actually will force the 
the brake fluid back up in the line that wasn't calipered. And I'm sure there's somebody out there who says that that's not a good idea. Uh, but I, when I put this back together, we will bleed off this line and we'll bleed it until the fluid runs pretty nice and clean. And we add in new and every, if you do that every time you do your brakes, and you should bleed off a decent amount of of old fluid every time you'll keep your fluid pretty turned over now again this truck doesn't get a lot of miles so I'll probably bleed off more with that in mind because we don't go through as you can see many brakes these these probably have a good 50% of pad left on them but the the back plate and the clips everything's gone so with that come in here these things are pretty square so I'll use some combination of the die grinder this is an angled die grinder with the scotch plate cutter uh, these are pretty bad so we're gonna have to we have to go to this sander disc he's a little bit more aggressive you can see uh, up close there's actually parts of the rust that are sticking out and that, that's what changes and swells the metal like I was saying so you got to remove all that and you got to get it down to and you can use a file safety glasses on guys <laughs> on this inside I can't get them in there so I'll use my file here I'm just trying to you know get down to where you can see clean metal we're not trying to remove metal but this should true up and get you back down to the original solid metal and remove all of that material that Well, as a result of the corrosion and again this truck sits so much that most trucks are probably not nearly like this this truck we just we use to buzz around do various things pick up stuff use it around the yard a lot in the yard big yard of course but uh it's our side by side <laughs> we do dirt bikes and ATVs, so this is our side by side, and it's actually uh, cheaper than a side by side. It has heat and air, window wipers, four doors, <laughs> a little bit longer. Well, I guess than some. Some of those side by sides are look like four wheel drive limousines, and teeter totter on a six inch tall bump. Hmm. But uh, anyway, now time for your new clips. And on these, I'll usually put a little bit of I usually put a little bit of anti-seize on these. I think ooh, just a thin coat. Try to only put it in the surfaces that the clip will contact, and I think it keeps those clips from squealing. Sometimes those things vibrate from the actuation of the brakes and I think it also reduces the amount of corrosion that will take place again. Because um, that's what happened with these is that the, the old clips from so long that steel started to swell underneath these clips and it makes the pads hang up and stick. They won't release. And that happened just, you know, 
why they're on the truck uh, you know for so long but again those pads might have been on here for <laughs> 10 years at this point maybe longer I'm not even sure I don't know if we did those I don't know if we've ever done them on this truck but in any case there's new clips now we have two pads inside he goes right in the piston and this guy goes on the outside of the caliper and he's got uh, they should sit like this but there's your new top clip remember him this guy get goes in the make sure you don't get any grease any anti-seize you don't want to get anything on your new pad or rotor for that matter these two clips need to slide right on here and that takes a little bit of, of force let me go ahead and get this guy off of here on this hub just a real real thin layer some of the surface area here it won't All right. totally right. prevent any problems I think a lot of the sticking happens around here but I don't, I don't want to put any of that on there hopefully these polymer coated will help being corrosion resistant this is the drum brake assembly for the e-brake we don't use this truck enough to worry about that uh, we have one of the e-brake cables is actually sticking so we don't use the e-brake that much right now but we are going to replace those um, cables and it'll be functioning normally again Stick a lug nut on here to hold the brake rotor right where you want it. While you put the caliper back on, it's a good little trick. Get the coat hanger back off there. Oh, one more thing. Set in there for a second. I like to take a little bit of the silicone. Oh. I forgot one thing. Let me check these slide pins. Yeah, they're moving very freely. Sometimes they need. Yeah, they're moving nice and free. Sometimes they need cleaned, taken out, and cleaned and re-greased. These, fortunately, fortunately do not, because that does add to the hassle. But I always like to put a little bit of silicone grease just right on these guys. Right where they contact that bracket and it should help not corrode. And also not stick for a period of time at least. I don't know if this is something that is advised or condoned by professionals, but I do it on every vehicle and I've got like eight and uh, I've had great success with it I've got brakes to go 60,000 miles like they should 
so. Make sure you tip this bottom in first. bottom in first and get those to engage you can watch this bottom boot pull him out a little bit and then the top boot yeah make sure everyone's situated we'll get a close-up here for where the pads should be sitting once they're Engaged. A couple of close ups here. Post a little thumbnails, a little bit easier. And we're trying to work on video quality overall, but the editing game's been stepped up big time, so hopefully they can make up for maybe our videos that aren't quite as good as they could be when we shoot them. But we're hoping this helps. I know that there, there may be, you know, there may be other videos out there about brakes. Uh, this is a 2010, and uh, I'm not sure what all years share this, but I know that all the way to 2014, I'd, I don't imagine they made any changes. If I had to guess, there's a couple years before, it could be 08 to 09 to 2014, maybe would share this. Um, but sometimes people don't go into the details sometimes people don't know those details and so that's why we felt like it might be a good idea to make a little video with a few things that we know and we recommend that have been time tested on three quarter ton commercial trucks half ton pickup uh, the front brakes on this very Ranger expedition and uh, like I said mostly mostly heavy-duty trucks to be perfectly honest but these little things never let me down you don't want to be beat this I don't know what the torque spec is but I go I go about as snug as I can with my hands and give it a few love taps again has always worked uh, worked fine if I had to guess I'd probably estimate that at like 50 60 foot pounds roughly right there and you don't want to kill them uh, they shouldn't really be all that tight. Now, it's time to go ahead and take this lug nut off. It's been holding the rotor in place until the caliper got situated. But you should be able to move this caliper back and forth. And it, it should be able to do that the entire time that your new rotor and pads are in service. The most essential thing is making sure that the new pad doesn't get stuck or corroded to that new clip if, if the clip corrodes and like I said this this truck sits a lot so the, those things will corrode and they'll kind of corrode together and sort of stick um, where they don't want to move or after you squeeze the brakes they don't want to release and the ride on there because it's just stuck and it can't slide freely anymore so that's why I think it's essential that again all that stuff you know we cleaned off the rust the clips are far enough away that they're not pinching uh, on the pads and you know you can easily slide that back and forth and hopefully this this brake job again like the rest will stand the test of time as well so with that we can kind of just get to putting the tire back on obviously uh, same thing on the other side uh, it's gonna be identical no need to shoot another one of these so we'll put the tire back on we'll take it on a test drive so Uh, real quick guys we're not gonna put the tire back on we we're gonna bleed this uh, brake line off we gotta bleed it off and then we can put the tire back on want to make a little correction